Mr. Adams. Good evening, Chairman, Dr. Steve Ison, elected officials, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It's always good to be in the great state of South Carolina. And it's a particular privilege to be here tonight in the great city of West Columbia. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, all of the people that made this possible, in particular Dr. Ison, who really ensured uh, that I was able to come here to be with you tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, there are a number of different people in our world that will tell you different things about America, about America's place in the world, about who you are, where you come from, what you do, and what you're all about. Ladies and gentlemen, often, the people that tell you those things are not truthful. The people that decide to speak out on matters concerning America speak from a point of view that is not objective, from a point of view that is quite simply dishonest. And I, in my small way, try to visit with as many people as possible all through America and explain to Americans that there is so much they have to be proud of and there are so many reasons why you can go out there and say I'm an American and I live in the greatest country in the history of the world. South Carolina is one of my favourite states because it truly is a repository of freedom and bravery and aside from the Texan model, it's difficult to really choose another state that does so typify and embody everything that America was founded on and everything that America is about. But as I visit with you tonight, and as we gather here in this magnificent city hall, America is really struggling. Struggling perhaps in a way that it hasn't struggled, at least in recent times before. And I can sense throughout America a feeling of despair. A feeling of, well, our country is not what it used to be. Our country is suffering. We're headed down the wrong path. We are moving on a trajectory that simply is not for us. And ladies and gentlemen, I cannot agree with you more. The success of America, the success of America's future, relies on a fidelity to the founding of this country. It relies on a loyalty to the principles of America, to the virtues of this land. It relies on the strong patriotism, the robust Christianity, the fierce individualism, the boldness of ordinary Americans, the propensity to take a risk and to do things differently to go where others have not been before, to blaze a new trail, to forge a new path. America is the most innovative of any nation, and despite all of her current ails, remains by far and away the greatest nation in the world today. America is falling behind. But here's the deal. America is only falling behind her own potential. America is not falling behind any other country. America is not falling behind any other culture. It remains the exceptional being of the world. It's just that 
It's not performing to its peak. It's not at its best. And this is partly because of the rise of various ideologies within America, which have come from external sources, such as Europe and other English-speaking nations, that have infested the American psyche and made everyday Americans question what they believe and why they believe it. They're the doctrines of relativism, of pluralism, of there is no right or wrong. There is no better or worse. There is no black and there is no white. <coughs> there is just right. Ladies and gentlemen, America was always about having a firm, definite, and absolute position on matters. Sure, in any society, there needs to be progress. Things do need to change. But real progress is conserving the things that have made you strong to begin with. Real progress is having the courage of standing with time-old virtues, things that should never be changed. Now, we're told that if you believe in God, you're uneducated. You're old-fashioned. Who could possibly believe in God today? When you fly the American flag and you proudly hoist your hand on top of your heart, that is seen as over the top. It's silly. Why would anyone do that for their country? We're all humans. We're all people. We just happen to come from different countries with different flags. We're told that we can't call things or people by certain labels, even though we've done it all our lives. And that's because we need to tiptoe around eggshells. In every single way, the elites of our world have sought to emasculate us to emasculate our culture and to really create a fundamentally different agenda for the Western world. And in America, these ideologies are the antithesis, the absolute opposite of what this nation was founded on and what this nation is all about. You see, ladies and gentlemen, when you compare America to other countries right across the world, you quickly find that while it might not seem to you right now to be, this is a conservative nation in a sea of socialism. Where the rest of the world does collectivism, America does individualism. Where the rest of the world subscribes to radical multiculturalism, America does in pluribus unum. Where the rest of the world sides with Palestine, America sides with Israel. Where the rest of the world believes that nothing is worthwhile going to war for and fighting for, America says otherwise. On every single step, on every single measure, this country today is vastly different to any other. And that is why it attracts the ire of those leftist agendas that are frustrated that they cannot penetrate the mainstream of America. Sure, they've penetrated the elites of America, but our elites are elites are elites. The mainstream men and women of America who I love visiting with. You find them particularly in the south of this country, some in the southwest, some in the southeast, some in the midwest. All of these parts of America are bastions 
of cultural conservatism, of great civilization, where the rest of the world has really well and truly faltered. But as the great modern day President Ronald Reagan said, freedom is only ever one generation away from extinction. It requires eternal vigilance to preserve freedom, to educate the young men and women that will one day rise to become this nation's leaders, that will one day be bequeathed the greatest strongest and wealthiest nation in the world and all of the responsibility that comes with that. And it is why it is such a tragedy that our classrooms, that our lecture halls, in schools and universities, as well as our media, it's a tragedy that those places have become strongholds of the elites, strongholds of men and women that have a fundamentally different view to what this nation, to what family and to what life means. And it is incumbent upon each and every single one of us to recapture those places. Because no less than not just the freedom of America, but the freedom of the world is at stake. You might be wondering why a non-American, a, a foreigner, an alien, <laughs> would be worried about the strength of America and the success of America. Why would it matter to me how America does? what path America's on? The answer, my friends, is extraordinarily simple. What is good for America is good for the world. A strong America is a strong world. A weak America is a weak world. And just as, as it is incumbent upon us to recapture those strongholds of the elites, it is our great moral imperative, it is the moral imperative of our time for Americans and non-Americans together alike to keep America strong. Which is quite frankly, ladies and gentlemen, the alternative is unthinkable, unquestioningly unthinkable. A world in which America is not the strongest power is frightening. And one need only cast their eyes back over the history pages of this nation to work that out. One of the things about America that each and every single one of you should know and has to know and must continue to inform and inspire others with is that the only conclusion one can draw from examining America, analysing the history the culture, the people, the events, is that this nation truly does serve a providential purpose. It's hard to escape that conclusion. And that is something that you really must remember when times are tough, when you feel like you might give up You've always got to remember that this is a nation that truly does in many ways carry out God's work. And I think that's been a real secret to America's ability to always turn the tide. And if you go back and you look throughout history, there have been 
innumerable occasions where America has been considered to be finished, to be done, to be up, to be all over. And every single time, not only has America made a recovery, America has made a recovery and emerged even better than it was when it confronted that problem or that adversity. The early defeats by Britain in the War of Independence, the loss of the Philippines, Pearl Harbor, September 11, all of those times, every single one of them, America came back. And so I have little doubt that America will make a similar recovery with what is currently occurring in this nation. <coughs> with the election of a new president, America's troubles won't end immediately, but they certainly will get a lot better. One of the things that America needs to understand is that the manifestation of those festering ideologies that I spoke about earlier, the greatest manifestation of that has been this pull by certain sources and forces within America toward Europe, toward the failed <coughs> European model. That's something that you have to fight with all your strength and all your might. And the thing is, is that Europe is detonating in real time. You just have to turn on the TV and look at it. Look at the riots in Greece right now, today. Look at everything that's going on. Look at the consequences of when government becomes God, when government is your anchor. When government is so large that individual responsibility and self-reliance don't even need to exist. When government has such an overwhelming presence in your life, you don't even find it necessary to have children or have a family. When government is so bloated that you struggle to set up that business to do different things. When you're working so hard and other people are getting a free run, that's not what America's about. The beautiful thing about America, the thing that captured my imagination as a child and that has captured the imaginations of the silent majority right around the world is this. Each and every single person can rise above the circumstances of their birth to achieve whatever it is that they want to achieve. That's the magnificent idea that is America. And ladies and gentlemen, don't ever fall into this trap of believing that America is just another nation. It's not just a nation. America is an idea a concept, a notion, an experiment. It transcends borders. It's bigger than a geographic entity. It's why wherever there is freedom, the flag of America truly does fly. You need to remember all of these things. You need to remember these in the depths of your despair. Because America is hurting, but as that famous political commercial by Ronald Reagan in the 1980s said, there will be mourning again in America. And you need to remain vigilant. You need to remain committed to those ideas that make America so incredible. You have the greatest fighting force that this world has ever seen, the most honourable and noble military. Men and women that protect this country here and abroad at enormous expense. Through spilt blood and lost limbs, all over the world, Americans have fought to preserve or bequeath freedom to men and women that they never even met. 
This is the most philanthropic country in the world. Per capita, per individual, no one gives as much to charity as an American. An open heart, an open hand. That's what America is all about. And that's what it's got to continue to be all about. But I'm given great hope because Alexis de Tocqueville, the famous 18th century philosopher, identified that the incredible thing about America was, and Americans, was their ability to organise and mobilise to defeat a problem, to meet a challenge. And that's what we certainly have seen with the Tea Party movement in America, a movement that is only possible in this nation. Nowhere else is a movement like that possible. You need to remember who you are and where you come from and what needs to happen for you to remain the beacon of hope and freedom for the world. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'll be happy to take your questions.